I've been playing Felvedeck because you have no time to game. So this is the next in my When the Credits Roll series, a series in which I only play a game once I've seen the credits roll, just so you can have some faith, kind of, that I maybe know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the game. You never know. First, the basics. So it was released on March 29th, 2024 for PC. It was developed by Joseph Pavelka. Sorry if I butchered that name. Um, and he's pretty much a one-man show with, you know, the classic with a bit of help and music and stuff like that. Uh, and it took me roughly four hours to complete. Now, just a note, from this point on, I'm trying something a little different with my reviews. Um, before, they were all scripted poorly. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm giving myself notes and giving my, myself the ability to just talk um, as much or as little as I want or I can feel about it with no restriction on the script. So yeah, what is Velvedeck? Uh, good question. It's a bit of an odd one. I mean, you're probably seeing the graphics now on screen and they are unique. Kind of reminiscent of like PS1 era. Um, chuck in a bit of like Hilux, which is a really weird RPG that was released a few years ago. And that sort of vein of weird, small RPGs, it fits very much in there. Uh, sprinkle on a layer of Monty Python, and I think this is what you're getting. This this is Falverdeck. Uh I mean, your main character is Pavel, the drunken knight. He seems to be like the second in command of the, the local area under his lord. But he's currently experienced a bit of a heartache, so he's become a bit of a drunk. And because of that, he sent to become buddies with the local Christian priest um, who's trying to help him, kind of. Or they're corrupting each other. It's hard to tell. But the game's set in the Slovak Highlands, which is being ravaged by, like, Hussite pillagers, Ottoman spies, and a weird-ass cult. And, I mean, there's some interesting enemies you're going to face because of them. Um... The story is just tongue-in-cheek. It's oddball. I don't know much about the history of that region, but it does go into that a little bit. Um, and it's pretty hilarious, some of the stuff that goes on. Uh, the A lot of these characters just don't seem to care and are doing their own thing <laughs> in their own way. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite funny. The, the, the writing is it can be a little bit verbose and a little bit odd because English isn't this first language but that doesn't stop it from being quite comical <laughs> um, yeah the gameplay it, it's it's very very old school JRPG you know I think um fantasy star point of view is in like you don't see your dudes you see big enemy models and then your hands come into the screen and hit the enemies when you select an attack you get some special skills as well and you can use some items don't be afraid of using the items they're useful um the special skills as well they come from like the items you have equipped so sword mace whatever will give you extra abilities uh, most of the battles are kind of like scripted ones as in it's not like random encounters or even meeting enemies on the map, really. For most of it, it it's kind of, they are, you're, you're doing something, therefore you get into the fight. Uh, and you're going to fight some interesting dudes. And things. And it's it's not, it's not difficult, but a couple of the fights did take me a bit of figuring out how to win them. Maybe I wasn't strong enough at the time. It's not really a leveling system. But you do seem to get stronger as you get better equipment. So it's maybe I was under-equipped and that's why they kept kicking my ass. There's side quests to do and usually these are worth doing because you get like weird items or um, just interesting tidbits about the world. It's got a really intimate map. Uh, you'll get to know the map really well because it's not very big. 
like I said, it's a four hour game, so it's not a very long game. So you get to know the map really well. And the people in it, you get to know them. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. As anyway, I'm going to carry on giving what Metacritic think before I give my rating. And in this case, it's actually on an 8.3 at time of recording. Which, you know, yeah, yeah, good, good rating. It's also sat in Steam as overwhelmingly positive. So it's it's really liked. It's a really liked short experience. Um, and it's like I said, I fully agree with this. It's such a unique looking game. Such a fun story. And it was just one of those you can sit and do it in a weekend and have a blast playing the game. And so that's why I'm going to give it the rating of must play.